Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen United Methodist Church and our celebration of All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is a time when it can be mourning for those who've gone before, but it is also a celebration of those who've gone before as we have the assurance of our Lord that they have joined him in paradise. Please join us while we prepare our minds and hearts for worship. Good morning again. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen. Please forgive me if I'm fiddling with my glasses on and off, but I haven't found a solution for having them fog up on me, and this morning it seems to be particularly troublesome. I want to welcome everybody who is here. I want to welcome those who have joined us via our virtual broadcast. We want to extend a special welcome to any who are viewing who have not been regular members of our congregation. I want to announce so that everybody knows that while we have not had an official opening of the church, we are allowing those who are comfortable and feel safe doing so to attend our recording sessions so that we can have some live worship. The difference between what we're doing and an official opening is, is really a mental exercise because I do not want anyone who feels uncomfortable or unsafe being here because of the virus to feel obligated to come. If people don't feel safe and they don't feel comfortable because of the virus, that is certainly understandable. And we want to make sure that, that they understand that 
we're glad that they've chosen to stay home if that's how they feel. Um, all of that being said, today is the uh, marks a lot of things. It's the first of the month, which would normally make it a Holy Communion Sunday. I realized I had allowed myself to get a little too casual because of the virus. This is the first time I've been robed since last spring. And it is my practice to robe for Holy Communion, so I'm going to try to be a little less casual and lazy and do things the right way. All Saints Sunday is not an official beginning of the holiday season, but it seems to mark the beginning of that process as we go from All Saints to Thanksgiving and Advent and then into the Christmas season. It becomes a busy time, a stressful time for some people, a time of loneliness for others. We want you to know that we love you and that we care about you and that we want you to have the best of holiday seasons going forward. This is also our first live broadcast of our virtual worship services. We have been recording them a week ahead of time in order to avoid the technical difficulties that we ran into when we first started this. There are so many churches and organizations using online technology that we struggled to get our service uploaded properly a number of times and we're late getting it available. So we decided to start recording a week ahead of time and, and this Sunday is the first time that we are making a live broadcast public via Facebook Live. So I want to welcome anybody who's joining us for our live service and we will be live from here on. I felt like it was just a little inappropriate to go into the holiday season and not be live. So that's why we're doing things the way we're doing them. I believe that's all the announcements I have this morning. Please join us for our opening hymn as we continue to worship.
forgive our stumble there, getting started. They're not used to me mentioning the opening hymn, and <laughs> I think I threw everybody out of sync there, so I apologize. We have some prayer requests this morning that I feel like I need to mention. We ask that you keep the Polks, Floyd and Sarah, in your prayers. Floyd has been going through cancer treatment. We ask that you continue to pray for Nicole Kaiser, who's recovering from a heart attack and cataract surgery. Jean and Sue Smith. Jean has been struggling with health issues for quite some time. We also ask that you pray for wisdom and guidance for Becky Sago as she organizes her life after the loss of her mother, Polly. Margaret Simpson is going through some medical tests and family issues, and we ask that we pray for her. Mike Holliday, who's been suffering from back pain for quite some time now, has had back surgery and is recovering from back surgery, and we ask that you pray for his speedy recovery and hopefully the alleviation of his back pain. Tommy and Pam Lowe, we want to keep them in our prayers. Faye New, who has suffered broken ribs, we want to keep them in our prayers. And Margaret Hughes, who's with us this morning, who's had some health issues, we want to pray for her recovery as well and for her well-being. So keep all of those in your minds and hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the many blessings that you bestow upon our lives. We thankful, thank you for your faithful presence in our midst as we have gathered to worship. We thank you for the change of seasons. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in this nation and the freedom to celebrate holidays and special days of worship, a freedom that many do not have outside our country. Our nation has been in turmoil and there has been much angst, much anger, much distress over the coming election. I, for one, am grateful that no matter what the outcome, the election will be over in a couple of days. And hopefully we can return to being loving, considerate, kind people. Guide all of our leaders that they may promote unity and that they may guide us and govern us with your wisdom. As we go through this worship service today, honoring and remembering those who have gone before us, help us to remember to celebrate their great works as Christians and their part in the ministry of the Worldwide Christian Church. We thank you for the forgiveness that you've offered through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to keep him foremost in our thoughts throughout our days. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we read our affirmation of faith. We will recite the Apostles' Creed. If you have a United Methodist hymnal at home, you will find it on page 881. Some of you may not need the hymnal. Some of you may have it memorized. I believe it's also available in the bulletin. That's page 881 in the United Methodist Hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I mentioned before, All Saints Sunday is both a time when possibly we mourn the loss of loved ones, especially those who've been lost recently, but we also celebrate the fact that they have gone ahead of us to be with the Lord, and any sorrow or unhappiness or pain that they may have had in this life has come to an end. We're going to read through the names of all of those saints who we have listed from St. Stephen Church, all of those who have been remembered by those of us who remain behind. The first candle we're going to light this morning is a little different. The events of this year are worth prayer and attention this All Saints Sunday. We light this first candle in honor of all of the Christians who have died from the coronavirus. For these souls, I ask that we share a brief silence for reflection and silent prayer. In the last 2,000 years, many Christians have gone to their Savior. Many of them were blessed to die as martyrs for Christ. But no matter how they passed, all have played a role in the ministry to the world. In our church's long history, a 
number of beloved saints have gone to the Lord before us. And each of these left their special mark on our church and on the community around us and in the hearts of their fellow Christians. So before I begin reading the names, I would ask that we share another brief silence for reflection and prayer for all of those who have gone before from the congregation of St. Stephen United Methodist Church. Charles Calhoun, Jr., David J. Boyd, Herbert and Cressy Clegg, Desi Taylor, Barbara Dickerson, Reverend and Mrs. W. K. Dickerson, Sr., Mr. and Mrs. W. M. Kate, brothers and sister of John Dickerson, Bill Gaddis, Kayla Gaddis, aunts and uncles of the Gaddis family, Florence Hunkerford, Dorla and Dell Hardford, May Gaddis' mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. C.H. Gaddis, the sisters of the Gaddis family, Barbara Dickerson, May Gaddis' brothers, Pat Wunt, Jean McAfee, Polly Sago, Joanne Allen, Dolores Kiefer, Cressy Clegg, Jean Black, Don and Nan Dickey, Ray and Betty Watt, Ed and Betty Lowe, Michael Hughes, Ricky Hughes, Ida Bell Johnson, Murray Johnson, Harold Johnson, Don Dickey, Pat Wunt, Barbara Holiday Brandt, Eula May Holiday, Clint Holiday, Leola Jones, Elmer Jones, Donald Jones, Mr. and Mrs. Kelsey Polk Sr., Mr. and Mrs. Kelsey Polk Jr., Virginia Speed, James O'Malley, Nell Fries, Mamie Atkins, Susan Waters, Desi and Bright Gilstrap, Wilburn and Catherine Butler, Lindy Butler, Otis Savage Sr., Ida Bell Johnson, 
Tony Gassaway. Meg Kibler. Reverend Claude Smithmeyer. Reverend Richard Harris. Suzanne Smith. Sheila Jackson. Essie May Reasons. O.G. Reasons Jr. Sandy Kolkowski. Mary and Don Simpson. W.E. Stephan. Mr. and Mrs. Hugh Lawrence. Nick Morai. Larry and Joyce Abel. Nellie Abercrombie. Joanne Allen. Leroy and B. Adams. Helen Arendt. Drexel and Ollie Ball. Clyde Bell. Ruth Bell. Paul and Jean Black. Fred and Miriam Blankenship. Sue Blankenship. Ruby Brackett. Earl and Pearl Brown. Alton Caudell. Dolph Chapman. Reuben and Alwain Cook. Deliah Cooper. Jesse and Bonnie Sue Cooper. Cecil and Jean Copeland. Maggie McCampbell. Ed and Edith McCollum. Jack Meters. LG and Bobby Mills. Leroy and Alice Millwood. Mrs. Maurice Mines. Bill Moore. Myrtle Moore. Mr. and Mrs. Walter Newton. Lucy Nogle. Barbara Noten, Norton. Pam Paget. Mr. Jack Painter. Ralph Pavlovsky. M.A. and Nellie Pitts. George Potter. Bitsy Harris Robbins. Willard and Opal Roper. Ruby Burnett Schaefer. Dewey and Evelyn Smith. Jerry and Margaret Smith. Ray and Ader Smithmeyer. Roy Stevens. Frank and Lenora Stevenson. Eugene and Marie Stewart. Herbert and Pearl Thompson. Annie Wallace. Florence Wallace. Don Walker. Ray and Betty Watt. Pauline and Arthur Dale Wiltsey. May Wise. Calvin Wright. Jean Delf. Martha Dickey. Ben and Mar Marge Dowling. Doris Dunlop. Rachel Bell Eloy. Mr. and Mrs. Charles England. Carl Goodwin. Bra Hardman. Edsel Harris. Bill and Brenda Hulster. George and Ruby.
Howard, Tom and Catherine Hutchins, Ida Bell Johnson, Betty Jolie, Robert and Cheryl M. Jones, Dorothy Kazmierski, Henry and Mary Kazmierski, Dolores Kiefer, John and Kiki Keel, Pat Keller, Helen Kuhn, Charles Kuhn, Cal and Betty Knowles, Nancy Knowles, Alton and Lois LaCroix, Fulton and Laura Wyming, Ed and Betty Lowe, Bill and Doris Lowe, Charles and Barbara McCampbell. Please add to your prayers anyone who may have been missed from the list. And please forgive me if I have mispronounced anyone's name. We have remaining three candles. These three candles represent those who have passed from our congregation in just this last year. Those whose loss is still fresh on our hearts. One more time before I read the names, I ask that we share a brief silence for reflection and prayer. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we hold up the family and friends and loved ones of all of those who've been named, of any whose names were somehow missed. We also hold up the family, friends, and loved ones of all of those who have gone before and all of the saints whose service in this world was ended by the COVID virus. We pray that we may remember them with a heart that misses them, but also a spirit of celebration that we know that they are now blessed and happy in your presence. We ask that you watch over all of us as we go forward. Strengthen us and prepare us that we may serve your ministry as well as all of those who've gone before. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
next hymn of praise is Sweet Beulah Land. Funny how social distancing works. I can take my mask off when I'm preaching and making announcements because there's nobody directly in front of me. Our worship team gets to take their masks off when they're singing and I have to put mine on so that nobody will hear me. It's actually doing that because I'm standing behind Beverly and I don't want run the risk and because nobody can hear me our scripture this morning comes from 1st John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 that's 1st John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 See 
what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has yet been revealed. Has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him. For we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. In the world outside the love of Christ, people mourn the loss of their loved ones, but they do so without the assurance or the hope of dwelling in the Lord's presence. They do not understand the celebration of something like All Saints Day, just like they don't understand many of our traditions and practices and sacraments. They don't understand that we can believe in heaven without having seen it first. They don't understand that we are free from the conviction of our past, not because we are perfect in ourselves, but because we are perfected in God's love. We do not have to know exactly what form we will take in paradise. But we know that when Jesus returns, we will be restored to the perfect image of God that was intended. And we know these things because they have been promised by God who is faithful in all things. During the last several months, Many people have died from the coronavirus, some Christian, and some not recognizing God in their lives. Our society views physical death as some bad thing that happens to people because they see death as the end. As Christians, we mourn for our fellow saints, not because they have ended, but because we will miss them. God's promise is that they have gone to a place with no sorrow. The love of God for his children exceeds our comprehension. He seeks relationship with us. So do not be frustrated or lose hope because the world can't understand our witness or accept the love of God for what it is. We are to shine with the light of God's love. But we cannot force the lost to come to that light. Many times they choose to stay in darkness. This may seem illogical to us who have experienced the joy of our Lord. It may not make sense. But only God knows who will accept the message or when a person is ready to receive that message and to receive God's love. 
One of the mysteries of faith is that some will turn away. When you run into those who oppose our faith or reject our Savior, count it as blessings that you are sharing the experience of our Lord. Because remember, the world rejected Jesus. The world opposed Jesus' teachings. The world did not understand his faith. The most educated priests of the Jewish faith failed to understand the message of God's Son. If the worst persecution we face today is that we are misunderstood, we should be happy. I've been studying early Christianity as one of the requirements for my position, and it is amazing the stories of early Christians who found great joy in the fact that they were allowed to suffer as martyrs the way Jesus suffered. It's hard for us to put ourselves in that position of celebrating the blessing of martyrdom. And yet that was how so many of them saw it, as a privilege and an honor to suffer for Christ. Today we will celebrate Holy Communion. In the Apostles' Creed, we say that we believe in the communion of the saints. So as you partake of the elements this morning, believe, as is promised, that your loved ones join with us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, not just today, which is their special day, but every time you take the bread and wine. Believe in the communion of the saints. Believe in the presence of the saints who's gone, who've gone before. For we are one family whether still in the physical realm or in the presence of our Lord in heaven. In the last several months, Because the church was closed and there was no one in the congregation to respond, I have been doing a shorter version of Holy Communion. This morning, we have a few people joining us, and I believe that we will start Holy Communion in our normal place on page 12 of the hymnal under invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. Amen. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and in all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. have been blessed for the sake of social distancing you are free to partake of the bread and the juice where you sit if you would like to come forward I will bless your elements um, as you come but please maintain the distance of required of at least six feet. given for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. Final hymn um, is printed in your bulletin, and it is, it is um, when the roll is called a tender.
take the memory of your loved ones with you, that they may be a blessing for you throughout the week. And we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Thank you.